Hey friends, Dr. Motley here, and today, this week, we're talking about SIBO and its effect on other organs. Can small intestinal bacterial overgrowth affect the function of other organs and not just the small intestine? And the answer is, yes, it can. I have many patients that come in and ask, Doc, can this particular problem in this organ be an effect of my intestinal issues? Yes, I see it all the time. So we're gonna go over this effect, how it happens in Chinese medicine, and what are the simple ways you and I can do to help free the flow between small intestinal bacterial overgrowth and other organs so that they can function properly, all of them working together synergistically. So let's start. In Chinese medicine, there is a cycle known as the Ori cycle. The Ori cycle, guys, is a circadian rhythm of energetic flow of bipolar electrical signals known as qi that runs around the body in a circular pattern. Your body is circulating qi or electrical signals around the whole body every 24 hours. They carry the electrical signals through small tubules within the fascial system, the connective tissue of the body that helps carry electrical signals throughout the fascia, near the muscles, around certain organs to do what? Electrical signals help heal, repair, rejuvenate. It helps recycle old toxins. These signals are passing through these tubes and they move very slowly, a few inches every minute. So think of them as electrical highways. You have these small tubules that are like highways. And what happens is the electrical signals are traveling from one organ to the next. Think of the electrical signals as little cars on a highway traveling from one city, which is one organ, let's say the heart, going down to the next organ, which is what? Going to be the small intestine. When you have these electrical signals running through the tubes, those are known as meridian pathways. And when you are talking about organ vitality, the meridian is running around the organ at a certain time of day. The Ori cycle says that two hours out of every 24 hour cycle, an organ, a particular organ where the energy is residing in or going near is at its highest peak performance. It's rejuvenating, it's repairing, it's recycling, it's even resting because a lot of the electricity is in that organ in that two hour period of the day. Does that make sense? So when we talk about the Ori cycle, we're talking about the small intestine in particular today. So the small intestine is at its highest peak at 1 to 3 p.m which means its activity, which is what? Digesting or absorbing the nutrients that you ate from breakfast and from lunch. Your body's assimilating all those nutrients to do what? To transfer the next amount of energy into the next organ, which would be the bladder. So what happens is during the Ori cycle, you're trying to absorb all these nutrients, but what happens when you get SIBO? small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, and that, that bacteria like Clostridium or E. coli, Klebsiella, strep or staph build up in the small intestine. What does your body do? Your body will recruit all that energy in that one period of time, one to 3 p.m., to try to help heal the situation because you have too much bacteria going on. Does that make sense too? You're gonna have this whole influx of energy in that small intestine trying to help you repair and rejuvenate. So you'll start seeing problems at one to 3 p.m bloating, gassy, diarrhea, or even constipation, depending on the bacteria you have. And many of these symptoms can occur from 1 to 3 p.m. Do you find your symptoms around the midday? Do you feel kind of gassy? Do you belch a lot? Now, when that energy is building up in the small intestine to help fight and repair from the SIBO, a few things can occur in this Ori cycle. Remember, the bipolar electric signals known as qi is supposed to travel through the tubes at the end of 3 p.m. to get to the bladder meridian, which starts from 3 to 5 p.m you're transferring down through the highway. So the energy gets in the car and goes, you know what, I gotta go back down to the bladder. And so you're gonna go give the bladder energy so it can run its function, which is what? Urination, detoxification from the kidneys, trying to detoxify you properly. So what happens if the small intestine absorbs too much energy because there's small intestinal bacterial overgrowth? It will start to hinder or create a blockage in the meridian to keep the energy here to help heal it. It's trying to repair. So it'll actually block the energy from going down into the next organ. That's why they call it a blocked meridian. That's why they call it inflammation because there's too much voltage and electricity built up in the small intestine and in the pathway of the small intestine. So this becomes a bladder deficiency. The bladder then starts to suffer and another organ system starts to become problematic because the small intestine is robbing too much energy from the body. So the bladder then starts to have problems. Do you urinate quite a bit at night? Do you have problems with UTIs? Do you have chronic urinary tract infections? Do you have kidney pain? 
Remember, the bladder is supposed to help you eliminate and detoxify just like the colon through fluids. But if the small intestine is robbing too much energy, that bladder can't function at 100%. So you can get some forms of cystitis, some forms of UTIs. You could have chronic yeast infections because the bladder can't get rid of things appropriately. On the flip side, if it absorbs a lot, that electrical signal can get hot and back up the tubules, back up into the meridian towards the heart. So you can start to have an overcharge of the heart where the heart does what? Starts to overheat because the small intestine is super hot. That's why they call them sister meridians. So the heart starts to give you palpitations, tachycardia, heart issues where you start to feel that flutter in your heart, all because small intestinal bacterial overgrowth has combined in the small intestine. You see how it works? Blockage here, deficiency of the signal going down, or a backup of the signal going to the heart. That's how the ORI cycle works. That's how an infection could create problems in other organs. Let alone, if you read Chinese medicine, you'll see how all the organs run, run in one particular cycle and how one problem can create a multitude of issues. So what are the ways that you and I can actually help resolve it? Well, if you and I think you know, pretty properly, take the block out of the small intestine. If you remove the small intestinal bacterial overgrowth with the herbals we have talked about, some of the spices, some of the recommendations, you start to eliminate that small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, the energy, the electrical signals start to free up. They don't need to be there to help repair, so they'll start flowing down to the bladder. It'll take pressure off the heart, so hopefully tachycardia goes away and some of the heart palpitations, and then you start to what? Not pee so much in the middle of the night, not having as many UTIs. You'll start seeing yourself heal up, plus doing acupuncture, acupressure, chiropractic, Doing those types of body work and energy restoration will actually help take pressure off the small intestine to help proper free flow so that all the organs in the cycle start to revolve energetic balance. That's it in a nutshell, guys. Can this create this? Yes, it can. But I want you to know, proper herbs, proper spices, acupuncture, chiropractic can help restore the flow. And I hope this was very informative to you guys because Next week, we're going to talk about emotions. We're going to talk about how this backup can create emotional instability and make you feel a little weepy, a little angry, a little cynical, a little apathetic, you know. I don't care. I really don't care. Anyway, love y'all guys. I hope this is helpful. This is the explanation. Hopefully it was simple. Take it easy.